Well, today has finally come, been I think three years in the making. I finally got some green beans that I can pull. So we're gonna pull green beans today. We're gonna hopefully take and get a bunch of these and some of these and put them together. Back in a minute. All right, welcome back. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this canning video. Uh, it's part of the part of the raising the garden videos, canning them. Uh, I think I've mentioned this in other videos. I don't when I raise garden, I don't raise you know just a, a couple of little radishes here, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. I just don't personally do it, or a couple of little small things here. I generally try to raise what I would say would be in bulk. You know, a lot of green beans that I can plant, a roll of tomatoes, some corn that I can freeze. Uh, the, you know, the smaller stuff is nice, but I, I just, I don't have time to, to look after just a little piece of roll of this or that. But, um, so come along with us. We're gonna clean some of these baskets up and wash them and uh, we'll get out here to the green bean. I try to get our picking buckets clean. Guys, I found a new love for fireman nozzles. I've been using those pull nozzles for years and it's just hard to beat the fireman nozzle. We'll pick them in the blue ones and come put them in the wooden baskets. And we'll walk out there and look at them. All right. So we got our six rolls, we got the alarm off. Got a good shower yesterday, so it's, it's gonna be a little bit damp in here. Oh, still got the Hysias on. They still wearing good, guys. And we'll look in here, and you can see we got quite a bit of beans here. We'll just have to work through each plant and get them off. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to hit them hard with some water. Here, Sammy. Roma two now. So it's a flat bean and we'll hit them something like that right there. I'm gonna hit them hard with water after we pick over them today. And uh, we'll, I'll keep the video updated. We'll get little sections of it and, and uh, hopefully next week I'll get another pulling off of it. Let me just show you a little bit over the garden over here. I had started watering this corn when it rained and you can, I don't know if the camera do it justice, but you can see where the wind laid it down pretty hard. Um, this is the Stoll's Evergreen. And I'll be honest with you guys, this patch last year, if you've been following the channel for a while, I put some sunflowers in here, but it just didn't do right. And I loaded it up with, with a lime and it's still if i use this patch again which is not on my land but if i was to use it again i probably will get a soil sample on it because this corn's not it's not growing really like it should it should be a whole lot taller than this by now so what we'll probably do is raise our corn back over to my big barn I hadn't raised it there in about three years, so we'll probably put it back over there. But let's pick a few beans. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, this is not, I enjoy my green beans, I'm not gonna lie, but picking them is not my favorite thing to do. Um, I'm kind of heavy handed on the plant, so I, I'm very easily, uh, 
to knock a few plants over. It rained, like I said, last night, and then I got a bad habit of stuff like that. I just got to pull it out. I can't help it. <coughs> Pigweed. It rained last night, so the, the furs are a little wet, which, I mean, I guess it's okay. We'll take it. We need to rain. There's, there's a lot of folks need to rain a lot, a lot worse than me. I was actually able to water this. I've, I've been watering it this week, and that's why it's kind of extra wet. But so this is basically it. It takes you got to kind of work your way through these plants. Um, kind of got to move them around a little bit, like that one's close to the bottom. And that rain last night put put a bunch of dirt on it. But <coughs> I got to wait it. I'll rinse them off before we after we snap them and so hopefully that'll uh, get her taken care of. I'll go on and tell you now by the time this video is over with my pants are probably going to be dirty <laughs> but that's okay. So what we'll do we'll pick a few come back to you in a little bit when we got some more in the bucket. That's what we got so far. That's a that little handful right there is a dinner for one person. And we went this far. So we'll be back in a little bit. All right, so we almost got three rolls done. We got Will here now. And Lino's helping us. Which Lino's disappointing us. She's the only one wearing gloves. I don't I don't know why, but she's wearing gloves. But uh so we're gonna this is what I got off of my roll. So we're going to put them over here in the shade for a little bit. I'll take this trailer and put them in here and I'll do a, just kind of spread them out a little bit so they don't get too hot. I'll do a pre-rinse before I carry them in the house and get ready to snap them. We'll kind of rinse them down good and do a little pre-rinse. And then we'll uh, hopefully get the other three and get them all canned up. It's a little bit wet out in the garden right now, but I say we'll take it. But how much you got in your bucket, Will? Okay. I'll we'll take these nose. It's another half. Yay! Uh oh. Lino's picking trash. There's leaves. We're gonna have to get on her. That's getting to be quite a little mess there. Get them rinsed down. We may, I'm not sure, I got six rolls. We may pull four of them and save two for Monday. So we'll see. All right, guys, it's getting close to 12 o'clock, and we got four rolls almost done. I think I'm going to save these two rolls for Will and let him get them uh, Monday, and uh, we'll can what we got today, which is pretty good amount. I mean, hopefully, I think it would maybe be in the 30s maybe 40 quarts, somewhere along there. I was a fairly decent tobacco puller, but I go on to tell you guys, I ain't worth nothing at beans. I uh, probably leave more than I pull. <laughs> Somebody's using gloves, now is barefoot. <laughs> Crocs. Right shoe for the right job, right? So we'll wash these things off in a little bit. We'll take you inside and we'll snap some and we'll bring you back, fill some jars up and go from there.
hated picking tomatoes with Ellie because if he found a rotten one, he'd be like, <laughs> and then throw it at one of us. Sammy. All right, we're going to do a little pre-rinse here. A lot of the green beans were vined out and on the ground. So we'll, this is not quite all of them. Lino and Will have a couple of basketfuls. After we snap them, we'll rinse them again. I'm just trying to get some of that initial dirt off. I kind of think the water Kristen Crispin Crisp C R I S P back up a little bit. I'm glad I decided to wait on those other two rolls cuz it uh it's going to be a little bit just canning these. You wouldn't think so, but there sure is a lot falling through that trailer. Must be Sammy's beans. He's unpulled some small ones somewhere. All right, well, let that go right there. Spread these out a little bit. Boy, somebody got that dirt on that trailer. Sammy, did you do that? Uh, nope. <clears throat> I don't think I did. I think you did. Lots and lots of green beans. All right. We'll come back when we're snapping them. All right, guys. Now is the fun part so we got these i'm not sure what size these baskets are they're probably a couple of bushels maybe three bushels a piece i don't know all i know is they're tall and they're big so we got these two full and uh i'm actually just snapping the end off i'll leave that end there because that little end is just as soft as a green bean it's it's fine, it's just part of the green bean. So I just snapped the one end off and just go from there. So once we snap all this and start getting it ready, I'll get the canner for somebody, you know, maybe somebody is just tuning in for the first time and never seen a cannon. And we'll talk about the canner a second. And the ball, B-A-L-L, -L, the ball canning book. I'm sure you could still probably buy one, um, eBay, or Amazon or somewhere like that, but it's a wonderful book to go by to give you instructions on it. I did have a, a Sammy, Sammy's awful comfortable. He's a reclining snapping, but I, I, I did have a little rant, not a rant, but just something that really irked me last week. And I know I have some subscribers smart enough that will tell me if I'm thinking wrong or not. But I read where Boeing come and said, well, we can't p 
paint this new presidential plane the color that President Trump wanted because it's going to cause a heat problem. So the Biden administration said, yeah, okay, we'll change the color of it. I, I could be wrong, and this is not a political thing. This is just more of a, it's not, if they don't like the color of it, just come out and say, hey, I don't like the color of it. We're going to change the color. But to make some horse manure excuse about sensors on the bottom of a plane. So, so I, I'm to understand Boeing has sensors on the bottom side of this plane that can't take the heat difference between dark blue and light blue. So they have developed a billion dollar plane with sensors that have a 10 degree tolerance. I just don't buy it. I, I don't buy it whatsoever because a sensor in a Dodge truck will handle white, black, green, brown, purple, whatever color they paint on that truck, it'll handle it. And, I, and not to mention that uh, British Airways Boeing 747s are dark blue on the bottom. So, you know, again, I, it just amazes me how the average person just will swallow hook, line, and sinker, whatever someone says. And Boeing says that they're afraid that the dark color on the bottom of the plane, by the way, which is not facing up towards the sun, is facing towards the bottom. And don't tell me the plane's going so fast that it's creating heat, because it's probably top six, seven hundred miles an hour top at the best, more like four or five hundred miles per hour. So I just, that really bothered me. And I know we're snapping beans, but I had done thought about it. And I said, you know, my subscribers are pretty smart and they'll tell me if I'm thinking wrong, but I, I'm just thinking that that sensor would probably handle, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it would handle a 500 degree difference up or down. And for them to come out and say that it just can't handle the dark blue color because they'd have to redo everything. I don't buy it. I think the truth is, is they just didn't like the color and they wanted to leave it the same color it is. But, another story for another day. <laughs> I know. Um, so what, we're gonna finish snapping. We'll load some jars in a little bit. This, this may get to be a little bit of a long video, but I, I did want to show the whole process from picking it and you know, you guys, you, you see me plant this stuff and uh, I'm, I'm trying to incorporate more of showing you guys preserving it this year than I have in times past. So we'll come back in a little bit. Okay guys, this is my second washing here. So what I do is I take all the ones that's been snapped and put them in something big and start floating them. And what my hope is, is any heavy things like dirt and grit is settled to the bottom because the beans will actually float um, so the more I get out of here they'll start floating down so what we're going to do we're going to pack them uh, in the jars now the ball book here's what I was talking about guys this, this book here is probably from the 70s this blue book ball cannon guide that one's a little bit newer but it's not just green beans. I mean, there's all kinds of different ones, different things in our beets, carrots. I mean, you name it. And, you know, do I do it exactly like them? No, I, I don't preheat my jars. I just make sure they're nice and clean. Uh, and go ahead and just go from there. So basically, we'll just take now these green beans and kind of Give them a toss around like this. Get them washed up. And I'll start taking them. And putting them in the can. Just let them fall in there. I don't pack them too, too hard. What I'll do is I'll take something like that and kind of shake it around a little bit and I can put another little handful in there. 
that's about like where I like it right there. I like it the bottom of the thing there. So we'll put some more in. Some of you may can, may have an electric stove. You may have one of those uh, infrared stoves. I, I don't know this to be fact, but I personally, I mean, I've seen people can on electric stove and I, I wouldn't run more than one canner on an electric stove. But on the infrared stoves, I'd be real weary of it. Um, it's just, it produces a lot of heat and I don't, I don't know if they can handle it or not. The canner will hold about seven quarts. And I'll hold a few more pints and quarts. So what we gotta do, we'll put one teaspoon of salt in each one of these. And you'll want to use just plain salt with no iodine in it. And the reason for that is the iodine would probably darken it up. So just plain salt. I suppose if you were in some sort of bad pinch and you had to use some iodine salt, it'd be okay. It just, like I said, it would darken up whatever you can. And canners, a lot of people are worried about them. I'll say this while I got it on my mind. Basically, you just make sure that these holes are clear of any obstructions. It is. And the jiggler, you wanna make sure, as long as that hole is clear, that pressure will move that around and it'll, it'll let that pressure off of it. Um, that's the thing about pressure canners, they're, you know, they're just under such high pressure. I don't cook any food food, like I don't take chicken and meat or something and pressure cook them in a canner. Any of my canners that I use for canning green beans or squash or anything. And I think sometimes that's probably how they get clogged up. They get oil or fat. They get fat in there. Teaspoon of salt in each one. I like putting them on the top like this, right on the beans. So when I fill it up with water, I feel like it kind of spreads it through the whole jar. All right, so now it's time to fill them up with water. I found a deal on Amazon, I say a deal. It was a hundred lids, I think for, I don't know, 25, 30. I, I'd have to look. It wasn't, it wasn't no terrible price. I'm, I'm sure, unfortunately, those lids are probably from China. So we're going to try them on this run right here. I do have some ball lids, but I was trying to save a certain amount of lids. I, I got a certain amount of lids I like keeping in stock just in case what happened with COVID happens again, where you can't buy lids. And we actually, the cans we've been opening, we've been doing it real gentle-like and not bending the lid any at all. And we have a few of those, and I totally know that I'm gonna try to reuse a couple of lids just to see if they'll sell off again. Um, Lids is very important to canning. It's, if you ain't got lids, you ain't got nothing. And so, um, I would hope, you know, that we could always get our hands on them, but that's not always the case. All right, get the lids on them here. I save my rings. I hardly ever, I mean, I do sometimes, but make sure that's just one. I hardly ever uh, 
to buy rings. I use these rings two or three, four times, even if they got a little rust on them. That rust, that rust to help them seal off a little bit. <laughs> So these are the Amazon lids, so we'll, and I think that's another step, guys, that they tell you to do, which is to heat up the lids in hot water. Um, I just never personally have. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, it's probably a good idea. I probably should do it, but I don't. Okay, let's get them in the canner here. Well, somehow I made eight jugs. I don't know what I was thinking. On the water in the bottom of the canner, I like for it to go about that far up on the jar. Not quite, maybe halfway up on the jar. And that's about the amount of water I like to have in the canner. So that's gonna be seven. I'm gonna say, and probably what I'll do is I'm gonna show, I'll show you guys this cannon, the pressure when it's up on it. And I'll show it to you when we get them out. And probably uh, the last part of the video, I'll show you how many we got off of those four rolls. We'll be back. All right, so we're back last time. I got 18 here. One is which is ready to come out, this first one. This one's warming up. This one's cooling down. We got seven ready to go inside of that one as soon as I get them out. So seven, I feel like we're probably gonna be about a 30, five, six, somewhere along there today, um, which is a good run. We only picked four of the six rolls. We're gonna pick the other two uh, in a couple days and you know, probably get 16, 24 off of it somewhere along there. So I appreciate everybody hanging in there with us. Thank you. Let's crack the top on this before we go. A little hot. Oh, look at all that steam. I see a problem with one right now. Actually, I see a problem with two of them. This one's fine. This one had too much head pressure on it. Well, if you get in there close, you can see that lid's kind of buckled up. But what may happen when it cools on off further, it may uh, suck it in and be okay. Now, three out of the seven seemed like it had too much head pressure. I don't remember putting that much water on it, so I don't know if that's the product of the the Amazon lids that obviously came from China and not ball. Um, it'll be interesting to see how these runs do. We may switch to some ball lids. So we'll just, you know, take them out here and see how they sell off. Hopefully they'll pull back down and I won't have to mess with them. There's one thing I hate doing is redoing a redoing a can of green beans I, I never want to do it but so there we are we'll get them squared away somehow or another uh, like I said I don't know I mean I'm leaving here you can show this I mean I, I've left right there at the bottom of there is where the water level is I don't think that's over full so I'm a really Surprised that those did that. So, like I said, it could be just here they are. Got them off of Amazon. Is I don't know. And like I said, I'm sure they were 
not ball or made in China. So anyway, thank you guys. God bless you. We'll get to a uh, cultivating video and got some bush hogging I want to do. Got some work on a bush hog I got to do. And uh, we'll see you again.